So, as soon as I walked on stage, most of you probably either made a judgment about me, noticed what I was wearing, looked at my hair, or were watching us temporarily at the stage. And you can break me off for the next five minutes and not listen to a word that I say. And that's okay, because I'm still going to be standing here talking anyways. So, you can take anything, take it from the beginning here, and just always remember to keep an open mind. If you were to ask my mother what I know at the age of 18, she would say that I think I know everything, which isn't true. But I do think that high school has taught me a lot. And not just the lessons of physics and calculus and how to write a research paper, but more so how to open my mind up to different things and expand my horizons to places that I had never thought that I would go. If you were to take a walk through any modern high school, even Baldwin, you would see how clear the divide is between the students. And not just by race or by gender, but by club and sport and interest. And it's almost like watching a bad teen movie from the 80s. And it's kind of weird that it's still so prevalent today. So this year, for my English project, Dr. Harold presented it to us being really non-traditional, and he said basically to find a problem and to solve it. And if you couldn't solve it, then at least go the extra mile to explain how this problem impacts society and how little things can help make a difference. So I chose to go in the direction of social circles in my high school because I felt that was where I was most qualified to talk about. So my partner and I, Mitch Chair, conducted countless interviews, and we decided to create a motion, motivational video in order to get the students to remember to keep an open mind and not to judge a book by its cover, and just explain how every person has so much more to them than you just believe. Just like you heard from Mr. Graff, it takes about seven seconds within meeting someone to formulate an opinion on them. Seven seconds, really what you learn is their name. I think it's more of an overstatement. I think it's closer to one second. And you don't even have to meet the person anymore. You can read a tweet or look at an Instagram photo or a profile picture or a news article they shared on Facebook. And all of a sudden, you have this opinion of someone that you've never actually seen live in person. So what Mitch and I discovered was that as kind as we would like to believe that we are. And it's shocking that throughout the friends that I made in high school, they still surprise me every single day. Like, the captain of our football and basketball team has gotten about one B all of high school. And the girl that sits next to me in AP Chemistry is not only at the top of the junior class, but letters in three varsity sports. And my friend that has all the crazy piercings on her face that kind of scare people off is the most exuberant and bubbly and outgoing girl I've ever met and plans to be a doctor someday. The captain of the lacrosse team likes to listen to death metal and nirvana and a little bit of classic rock. And I even have a friend with blue hair who isn't the least bit punk, but is actually kind of reminds me of Bubbles from the Powerpuff Girls, if you guys ever watched that. <laughs> So do you think that any of these people get the credit that they deserve for the diversity in their personalities? Absolutely not. And it's not just things that we see in high schools. It's just found so big here because we're such a small community. But these type of judgments follow people throughout life in the workplace. They interrupt business and prevent globalization of your company and the economy because people are afraid of change. People are afraid to talk to someone where they have to struggle to listen to their accent or where their culture doesn't want to shake hands with them or things are just different and people don't know how to adjust. They do it because they're afraid. And I think the biggest issue with writing people off is not just how you choose not to listen to them, but then how you choose to treat them after you do so. One of the biggest problems in our schools in America is bullying. Su teen suicide is up astronaut, sorry, an astronomical amount due to bullying. About 30% of students admit to either being bullies 
or victims of bullying. And over 160,000 children, according to ABC News, stayed home from school every single day last year just in fear of being bullied. In a study in Great Britain, they found that over half of teen suicides were directly linked to bullying. So what I don't understand is how this isn't talked about, how people are afraid to talk about how mean they are, and how the snowstorm that happens in Pittsburgh every single year, by the way, is breaking news for four hours, but the 4,400 students who committed suicide last year, no one ever heard of. That's breaking news to me. I think that's life-changing stuff, and I think that's the things we need to be talking about. So if we hear these shocking statistics, and we think, well, what do we do to stop it? All you have to do is open up your mind. All you have to do is remember that human beings are just that. They're human beings. They're a puzzle. You put it together and you get to know them because one puzzle isn't made up of one piece. It's a dynamic of many different pieces. So if all you can do is remember not to judge someone, why wouldn't we do it? So next time you see someone leaving the gym that has big muscles, or a girl with way too many tattoos, in your opinion, or the kid that's shuffling his textbooks while he's fixing his glasses, or the kid that just moved here from another country. Go up to them, say hello, introduce yourself, and get to know them, because most often, they'll surprise you. Thank you.